takes a little bit to start. It wasn't too much. So, Red Arc, and I forget what the team is. I think the team is like, it's Red Arc and Arc, and then it's, oh, I guess this dude just entered by himself. I never noticed that. I know when I read the uh, the Kana earlier, I was stuck on like, Wark, huh, okay. So they actually call her Wark in Japan, which makes sense. Still don't know why, like. W arc. Now, now, the one thing I think is really interesting about this so far, something I don't even need to pause for, which is, um, you're going to notice that Roa doesn't do something this entire round. It, it stands out right there. I'm still going to let this go. That's a good block on the overhead. Poor guy stuck in the corner, tried to move or possibly DP, because Roa has a DP. Tries to block this time. More pressure. Get another chance. Throws again. Alright. Now, I really thought one thing was odd about that entire round. And that's just a little bit I know about Roa. Let me see if I can. I think it's right here. Like, it. 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 I don't want to say it boggles my mind because I get the idea that he was going for. Or. I get why this wasn't the most important thing. And let me double check one thing. Yeah, that's true. All right. So, first things first. He throws EX Lightning row i guess since that goes left to right that's a row the thing about oh uh, not ex full charge excuse me the thing about full charge and one of the reasons why c roa is ridiculous according to anybody who's actually played this game i've never played a c roa so i just have to agree with this because this is a crazy concept uh full charge lightning rows are air unblockable right and they cover like two-thirds of the screen they hit really far away and they turn around when you go over them. Right? right? That wasn't the one I was looking for. So it gets an air combo. That is something else that's kind of odd. Like, it's going in this series. Instead of doing something to keep her grounded and build up a. and get one lightning charge, which, if I recall correctly, lightning charge. Uh, level one lightning charge gives you a gives you a launch in the air. Uh, I have the game one. Uh, that one, and then that one, and then yeah, that gives you a launch, right? Because normally, that doesn't launch. Oh, it does launch. What does level one do? I know level one's important for something. I just looked at the guide yesterday. I don't remember what it is. No, 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 no. It's not that one. It's that one. Because you're 2 2 C. Because normally, that's just a hit. Which, that's something else he never used the whole time. There's a lot of Roa stuff that didn't happen the first round. Well, yeah. I kind of thought it was weird that he kind of went the F Roa route, which is I'm going to I'm going to throw you up. I'm going to launch you up and I'm going to throw you down. It's not a horrible idea because he's sitting in max and I guess I need to bring this back. Because when Roa has meter, this is another thing that's really crazy about Roa, all right? He has this move. 236C, all right? Full screen wall slam into untackable knockdown. Like this this dummy is set to normal, so this dummy's gonna tech, right? Full screen wall slam into untackable knockdown. You could actually get there and convert that. I'm I can't because I'm not a role player, but I'm pretty sure full screen you can convert that. Here's the real crazy thing about this move, alright? 
Yeah, that's why this air throw isn't a horrible idea. Well, not that air throw. Because that's when you combo off of this air throw. This is why this isn't a horrible idea at all, right? Ah, you can't move. <laughs> or it's not a great idea to move, rather. Like, you can move, but... <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yeah. It's not like he threw her out of uh, out of his control, because he's Crescent Roa. He, he doesn't ultimately care at the end of the day, but... There's just a lot of things that were left on the table. Or left to be desired, rather. In the end, as you see, he still puts up um, a EX Lightning Row, which, like I said earlier, um, I thought about showing you that. It's air unblockable. It's air unblockable. <laughs> so that jump that she took was really challenging his willingness to just let it rip. Which there's no repercussion. Because when you when he sets one in the air, he still has all his air mobility. And in fact, you normally set like two or three and just take control of the entire screen. If I remember correctly, he does more of that in the next round. It's something like that. That's really scary right there. That's a lot scarier than when Eflin puts her um puts her mirrors up. But yeah, I'm just gonna let his death and demise play again. This poor guy. Give me another turn. Get tossed. And I mean, this is one more thing I have to point out. A damned if you do, damned if you don't scenario, right? Because you can tech Warwick's throw, right? Okay. But she was looking for that tech, so it's like, all right, you're gonna tech and die, or you're just not gonna tech, and you're not, and you're still gonna die. He made the right decision by not teching because this forced her off of her meter. So this is the best case scenario. I mean, yeah, he could have tech, and maybe she missed the punish. But if she gets the punish, she dies for free. Now she starts round two with I think that's a sixteen. Needless to say, she's a Crescent Moon character who's starting the second round, and she can't uh, she can't activate heat, so she loses that free reversal. And if she gets blown up right now, she's probably got to take a little more damage before she gets uh, before she can try to get life back. She doesn't have EX, so if I remember correctly, which I'm double checking, I think that means she loses her reversal, because I think. Uh, Red Arc's reversal is metered. Yes, both of her reversals, well, really her only real one is metered. So, by ending the round like that, she's actually in a pretty bad scenario. That's another good part about it. You just use it as a combo ender, and now you're stuck in this crazy scenario. Now you're starting to see some of the power roll. And when it's done right, you you sit there and you block until you get the meter to bunker or something. That man, Crescent Moon Roa, is the warden. I'm actually somewhat certain that last lightning row is... um. I want to say it doesn't uh, it doesn't break cross up protection. I actually don't know. I actually don't know, and I'm gonna check this right now because I'm curious. Uh, how do I check this? I'll do that. That seems like it'll work. So I'm holding to the right. All right. I have to do this another way. Holding to the. Uh, I'll show you. I'll make more sense other than telling you. Right there. Yeah. Let me uh let me make sure this doesn't break any crazy rules. No. It doesn't break cross up protection, so I don't I, I don't know why she got hit here. I mean 
I know why she got tagged there. She got tagged trying to catch him on the way down and got put in a scramble. But that one right there in the end, I don't entirely know. It's possible that because she was waking up, she wasn't in block. That's a possibility. Uh, that would that would be my only guess. Other than she just really wanted to try to hit him and died for it. Yeah, now both of them have. Both of them at this point. Well, Red Arc just got a 200 meter. So she's got two get out of jail free cards or attempts out of jail. She's got a lot of pressure she can mount or continue with, um, with her EX rings. Her big EX rings. Because she has two versions of EX rings. Um, you know, I say that. I'm pretty sure the one she used in the first round is 150 meter. But Aroa, if he ever gets the space, he has the EX I showed you earlier. Two, uh, 236C. He has that. Um, I think he also has... Hey, he also has DP. I just had to check that real quick. I think he always has DP. I know C and F have DP. Yeah, he always does because H has it too. So he has an out beyond being in Crescent Moon. So he's not in the worst position right now. And you saw something kind of important right there. You saw, or rather this Roa saw. Right there. So what this is representing with a little bit of a hesitation. There's two mix-ups in this. One, well, two forms of pressure. That's a more specific way to put it. One is stagger. There was a stagger, so she's looking for buttons. There was no buttons. But more importantly, um, or what I think is more important, is um, kind of showing that she's willing to go for the half-charge high-low. Why do I have a... Sorry, I got distracted by something. This guy. Oh, he actually asked me a melty question. That's really random. But you see you see your stagger this button. I I can't tell you what it is off the top of my head, but it's chargeable for an overhead. So you have the universal mix up of you either just full charge it for the overhead or you half charge it and go low. That's something that might have possibly crossed her mind. Instead, she just quote unquote ticks into a throw. Staggers again off of that. She's making a lot of play off of that button. And at this point, it's just it's just going in. It's slaughtering him. And he tried to be a hero. He tried to hold on to his meter. Didn't really work out in the end. Now, this is the one that's a little bit relevant to me because it's Kohaku. And I'm interested in all things Kohaku. But you have Crescent Kohaku, which is the good old, I hit you. You're getting, you're probably going to wind up in a corner. You probably lost half your life. And you're probably in a setup against, like, an offensive monster. There's really no nice way to describe Satsuki. She's not the most amazing character ever in the grand scheme of things, but if she's in your face on her own accord, it's 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 not pretty. It's just not pretty. And actually, if I recall correctly, it's kind of funny what winds up killing this Kohaku throughout this set because if you don't really understand the mechanics of the game, it looks so... St or if you don't understand the mechanics and don't understand what the Kohaku is looking for, it looks so silly and so absent-minded. But it's actually one of the scarier things of Satsuki. I pointed out when it happens. Counter hit jump C. It's the C Kohaku stuff where you wind up in a corner, you lost about half your life, and you wind up in a setup. Good charm. Kohaku 
どんなプレーを見せてくれるのかまずはモアナイト This right here is so smart and it's so smart for a couple reasons it's character specific so smart I mean she's leaving a gap alright so that gives Satsuki a chance but where is Satsuki actually gonna go she's jumping away so she's jumping away from Satsuki's good button she is jumping so that is the one fatal flaw in this since Satsuki has arguably the best anti-air in the game with uh 623c her anti-air grab I think it's literally translated to the unreachable dream or something like that. That's the only flaw in this plan. But she's jumping away from 2C, which is a ridiculously good button. And she takes this, uh, Kohaku takes this space with a jump A, right? So Satsuki can't really jump up into her. Because even if she really wanted to jump up into her, unless she got the counter hit, she's not going to convert. So what's her other option? To dash under? As Satsuki, who doesn't really have the greatest mobility on the ground. It's actually a good thing to consider. Look at all. And as you saw, I have to point this out again. I'm sorry for pausing like five times. But, you know, YouTube. Look at as you saw, she tried to jump. Like, that's a perfectly reasonable idea. Sure, it's the first time. Sure, it's the, the, the control, if you will. But a good idea for Satsuki. She tries to jump. Maybe she can actually get the anti-air jump A. If she gets the anti-air or uh, air-to-air -air counter hit jump A, and if she gets a counter hit in the air, she's taking half of Kohaku's life, putting her in the corner in uh, at least a three-way. Can't falter for trying. Hey, you got hit. You know what that means, right? You're in a setup, and she has meter for cactus. See Kohaku. Mm, but that air grab, though. Uh, she left the jump C out of it. But she had to leave a jump C out of it. Now, this is this is just something to point out to Satsuki players, which, if you actually play Satsuki, you know this. Uh, this, is, this is more of a mechanics lesson right here. So... Normally, when Satsuki does her BMB, she does two two full charge jump Cs, right? She only does one, and she only does one because if she did the second one, that would be her three ground bounces because her um her neutral air throw counts as a ground bounce. Just wanted to point that out. Even if you get a neutral throw, you have to consider. If your throw itself takes away one of your ground bounces or your wall mounts or whatever. Now this right here is a tech error. She meant to do 623, she got 236, it happens. It's not the biggest loss in the world. Yo, what up, man? Yeah, I'll check it out in a little bit. But yeah, I got asked to. To stream some Melty, and this is me streaming Melty. <laughs> Cause, uh, all right, this is the, the, the hold on, I gotta cut you off. This is the part that looks so dumb. Let me show you the end result. Oh, that's when she died. All right. Sorry. I need this one. All right. Fun fact about Satsuki. Uh, once you do this, and I think you can even do this mid-screen, technically speaking, as long as you have meter, she can infinite you. That's just a fun fact about Satsuki. But this is a typical Satsuki setup. Stuff OTG into 623C here. Unreachable dream. And it pulls you out of the corner, right? It only it pulls you out of the corner by like a pixel or something like that. It's really deceptive. So this turns into a three-way mix-up. Like high low, left, right, hit throw. Okay? Psych. So at this point, you clearly see her jumping to the left, right? Like it's she's not hiding it. This isn't a slight drift, just plain as day. 
she's going back to the left of Kohaku, right? So, so why in the world would this Kohaku still get hit, right? And she gets hit by her beefier starter, which is 2B. Her 2B is not a low. Let me double check that. I'm fairly certain her 2B is not a low. Yeah, because I want to say her only low in Crescent is 2C. But you're here, so you're going to learn some Satsuki while I remember some Satsuki. Uh, I actually don't want that. I want Stand Guard. Yeah, her 2B is not a low. Neither is her 2A. It's only a low in, I think, not Crescent. But the only low she has, or the only low she has is her 2C and her 3C, right? So how in the world does she get hit by this? Because the other thing that could have happened, which is what this Kohaku was looking for, is for her to, um, let me pause it at a better place. is for her to air dash back because she still has her air dash and if she air dashes back you actually have the refl you have to have the reflex to block it uh block it to the left you know so you're actually player one and even if she air dashes back you still got to consider the high low or the throw so she was looking for um she's clearly looking for something high like, she doesn't have a cross-up hitbox. Excuse me, I was about to burp. I still am. She wasn't looking for a cross-up, I don't think, because Satsuki doesn't really have one. Like, her jump C is finicky. It kind of can in certain scenarios, but it's not like a big, beefy cross-up box. She's looking for an overhead right side. She got hit on the left. <laughs> I know I blew that up for a lot more than what it had to be, but that's why this poor Kohaku died in the first round. It looks so silly in real time if you don't understand it, because it's like, how do you get hit by that? But when you understand what could happen, it, it makes sense. It's not, it's not even really a smart trick, it's just the mechanics of this game. Fun fact, this Satsuki is not in the corner. Because whenever Kohaku, uh, Crescent Kohaku or Full Moon Kohaku, whenever they do their command grab, even if you're in the corner, if they whiff, they pull you one pixel out of the corner. Good 5A anti air. That's the um, counter hit she's looking for. Pop quiz. Pop quiz. You know who gets hit by this? People with really good reflexes because even though this looks like she's trying to do a meaty with a big starter which which is an uh, ulterior motive what's happening because I mean if you just randomly want to get hit by a 5c it's gonna hurt right the way she does it is the universal mix-up again the fake a half charge overhead into a low that's one of the one of the fundamental mix-ups that Satsuki has so, who gets hit by that? Somebody who has a good reaction. This Kohaku apparently doesn't have a good reaction. Chase that back, mm -mm. And I, I started to go back for that. I was reaching for my mouse. But, all you need to know is that Kohaku, yes, yeah, she died right there. All of this started because she tried to play Kohaku, and she tried to take the space in front of her with a jump B. But she got met with an uh, anti-air 5A. This is still Kohaku. She still gets a cactus. Why would you take mid-screen cactus for this right here? And that's kind of what we were looking for in the corner. But mid-screen. Now, here's something that I want to go back and point out right, here some points of good defense because she clearly sees this overhead. By the way, um, who does this? Crescent Kohaku, Half Moon Kohaku has this. Crescent and Half Koha Mech, and Crescent and Half Maids. 
Um, even oh, though she's clearly slashing you in the ankles, this is an overhead when it's full charge. When it's not full charge, it's a mid. But full charge, it's an overhead. And it's one thing to just like stand up and block it. Can't really do a whole lot if you block it for most characters. And then she still has her follow up. But this Satsuki has the presence of mind to not just block it, but shield it. And then command throw her for it. That's cool. Satsuki. For the record, I don't know if this happens to be the white Lin that won the Athena tournament, even though it's the same color and it's a half half moon white Lin. I just I don't know. Simple reflex. Good catch. Ikio. What? Side swap. Why is she side swap? I don't want to say to the middle. Like. Because I, I kind of had the impression that she could have put her in the other corner. I don't entirely know why she side swap, but she's close enough to the corner. Mm, fundamental 2D. This transcends. Capcom, SNK, anime, whatever. With a meaty, get some kind of reaction. Hit him with some buttons. Uh, you know where we're going, right? Dwarf City! Get it with the JoJo's. Pop quiz. And and the best part about this is even though it's only happened once, Sasuke can dis uh, the Sasuke can dis for this. Pauses. Half charge. This Lin, this white Lin, has already blocked the full charge overhead. So she can see it, right? That's why she got hit. Because she can see it. That's the kind of mix up, like the honest to God mix up, I don't think you can hit a bad player with. Like a bad player with no reaction. I don't think you can ever hit them with that. You can hit them if they're just not good, they're scared, and they just randomly stand up anyways. But if they're down backing and you try that on them, I don't think it'll ever work because I don't think they could see it. So, some, some sloppy confirms here. The bunker. <laughs> oh, this made me laugh. What a great bunker hitbox, right? More like, what a great low profile. <laughs> Just dove straight under that bunker. And it's a half moon bunker, so it's invincible. Completely invincible. Taihen trouble. Midi 5B starting that off. She's trying to poke her down. You know she's trying to poke her down because she got a uh, 2A. Didn't confirm it. Staying right on top of her. Command throw. Into like the least damage you've ever seen. Now that right there is, as you virtual fighters would call, stealing your turn. You don't get to do that to anybody. <laughs> Double EX ice shards or a full charge ice shards. Uh, no. And she had a chance to get out. She didn't entirely want to get out. She wanted to fight, which is kind of obvious by the fact that she lets a jump C rip right there. <laughs> Yeah, this Satsuki's not really trying to run. Because she could have got back into more space. But it's a guess. You don't know White Lin's going to throw a TK shard right here. So she just goes back in the corner, right? She's back into a fairly bad spot. And this is the thing I was talking about uh, last week, or last time I was doing this, about the different angles. So instead of trying to jump around with, like, a neutral jump, and then 
super double jumping over or air dashing over. She just tries to super jump out. And whether she intended for her to jump or not, this white lens just takes up this entire bubble right here with a 5C. Nope. Grabbed out of your 2C. That's another thing that'll make virtual fighter players mad. <laughs> Just saying that for Black Star. Kind of some crazy confirms. And it's kind of weird because there's three hit confirm. He did a three hit confirm to start all that, but then he still dropped it. It doesn't really matter. P.S. You saw the three way again. And that was just a uh, high low. She couldn't take the corner. Let me turn this down a little bit. I feel like I have to yell over it. Yeah, that was just a high low to end it. Zangief, please. See, that's that's one thing I kind of don't like about descriptions of some games. It's like, at what point does it really matter that you tell me Satsuki's quote-unquote a grappler? Because she's, like, okay, she has a command throw, and she kind of throws people in her combos. That's not super important to me. I'll, I'll go on that later. Right now, it's about... Red Art trying to get out of this corner. Oh, Wara takes two more turns. That's precedent. It's precedent. I'm sending a memo right there. Because this is 6C? This is some C. I forget what button this is. But in case you don't know, full char. Oh, you're referring to Whiteland? Case in point. But, uh. <laughs> Uh, in case you don't know, full charge 60 from Wara is an overhead. And it's an overhead that he can reverse beat from. You know where this is going. Getting some of that universal. Good toss. I don't think the second uh, full charge she did there. I don't even know what button that is. I don't think that one's an overhead. I just think it's a stagger and gives you a lot of uh, a lot of guard meter damage. Oof. You want to talk about getting juked out of your shoes? Because, I mean... the The only way this works... Is if he lands and does an A, or if he dashed and she just has a really bad reaction. It's possible that maybe she meant to stand up and shield and just didn't get up there in time, but she's shielding low. That's for a hard knockdown. OTG. Make her block meaty drill. Make her block meaty drill. Hmm. I think that's in the wrong game. Haha. -ha. <laughs> oh, that was so funny when I saw that. <laughs> oh, man. And he sat there in shield for like a second or so. So, <laughs> I don't know if he entirely knew this was coming, but... <laughs> He probably felt like a genius afterwards. So sad. And it takes uh takes a meter too. That's the that's the absolute worst part about it. Isn't the fact that she died. Isn't the fact that she tried to run up activate and she got shielded. It's the fact that now she starts this round with jack shit. <laughs> How the hell he got under that ring? I still don't know. It's actually because Wara has a pretty low dash. Like a deceptively low dash for like how he stands. He, he got that mark dash for, for the Smash Bros out there. 
And again, hey, I don't know what she's looking for that when she's shielding down there. Stag City. And that um, that EX. I think I pointed this out before, but just random knowledge about the character. That's plus. And this is this is some subtle things about good defense right here. All right. So, uh, Red Arc puts War in the corner. Obviously, that happens sometimes. And I don't know if she could have confirmed that ring or not. I'd have to actually know the character. Sorry. But she starts putting pressure on him, right? And she pushes herself out. And when she pushes herself out, the second she goes into the air, instead of just, like, co like surrendering to it, or really, instead of trying to run out, like, try to jump out away from her, even dash, which dash would have been okay. I don't know about jumping, but Wara has a really good 2B. It's really good anti-air, really good space. So what does he do? He protects the space that he's been given. This is somebody who's not really afraid of being in a corner, and he's actually pretty comfortable being in a corner. And whether this uh, arc saw it or not, she's like, oh, wait, I, I gave him, like, an inch. I can't mess with that. And then when when he gets the timing again, when she starts to jump again, he steps up. He only takes a small step. It's really a dash, but he takes, like, part of his dash. Two Bs again for more space. Forces her to retreat again. Now he has a lot of room to operate with. And that's how he gets out of the corner. That and the drill. It's a good way to disengage. Accident. Ooh. And the fancy water stuff. And just in case you've seen it a couple times, like right there, don't be fooled. Wara doesn't quote, he doesn't quote unquote have two air dashes, but he has a command air dash. So if you want to count that as having two dashes, which you should, he has two air dashes. But now he doesn't like have two uh, system air dashes, if you will. And then Arcroid. You're gonna you're gonna see something funny in here, which the way she doesn't doesn't really matter. It's just kind of impressive to see. I think it's like I think it's the first round. Yeah, next time he gets hit. Alright. This is Arcroid. Don't you ever fucking cry about your character being hard or like really execution heavy till you do this. Now, here's the thing I want to point out about this, which in the grand scheme of things isn't super important how she did it, but it's just <laughs> it's just like, wow, really? She can do this. Uh, Where's the one I'm looking for? Like right here. This is the first time she clips him, right? Yeah, that's the first time she clips him. Alright, look how much meter he has now, alright? This dude is sitting... Yeah, my mouse! He's sitting at like two, 280 or something. He's about to hit max. Look where his meter winds up when this is over. So why not burst? Well, she's not really going to do too much more damage. Maybe she'll drop it and I'll actually get to use my meter. Because at that point where I stopped, he still had like two thirds of his max and she only did like 300 more. <laughs> but... <laughs> She took him completely through max with a combo. If I remember correctly, one of the benefits of Arcroid is she can do that from a grab, meaning that you wouldn't be able to burst that at all. Like, you just don't have that option. I think Arc's pretty good.
Again, not like the best thing ever, but I think she's pretty good. Really technical though. And then the pressure. Even the even the fake pressure you get with like uh just player hesitation. It's jump C. It's jump C. All this time that she's kept him jailed, right? And all the time that she um all the uh, gaps that she left and he didn't try to move but right here <laughs> and right here she throws delayed records and she sees him standing up so she's like huh i'm pretty sure he wants to jump sure enough she goes up just because she's far out she can't do anything and if this water wanted to 2c looks really good right here 2c looks like Ridiculous. Excuse me, ridiculously good right here. 5C also looks pretty good as well, but 2C is actually kind of scary to this arc, so she doesn't really want to do anything with it. Somebody asked me to play Counter-Strike. What the f I'm sorry. 2C, all right? So she jumps away from 2C. She reacts to him jumping with him, and it's like, well, I still don't want to be in line with him because jump B, I think, yeah, that's the button I'm thinking of. Jump B looks really good. So you see her jumping away from jump B. But she reacts to him throwing the jump B because once most characters in this game, I think it's every character except for Crescent Coma. I have to do more testing. But when a character does jump B or jump C, they they have to land. So that's the green light for her to go in on him again, right? She doesn't land in front of him. No, she doesn't land a dash. That's jumping or that's landing and trying to run through like the cloak. She goes above him jump C. There's two purposes to this jump C. You're either going to block it on the ground, which, I mean, you go through hell again, or like he's trying to do, he's trying to jump away, and he's not, he's not specifically chicken blocking this. He's trying to jump away. So this is in Ark's favor of pinning him back down, which it does. I kind of wonder if she could have took a little bit more like maybe took a step before she went in there i don't think she could have aaron blocked him for that i'm pretty certain but i kind of wonder if she could have got a little more leeway before she went completely on our offensive doesn't matter because she kept him in the corner and she thought and okay i have to point this out this is more of a, um a, i don't want to say a higher up thing because it's not super high up but so she goes through all that trouble. She lands the first, or she makes him block the first jump C. Why do another one? Well, for the spacing that she made him block, and for the height that she made him block, she considered that he'd jump again. So she was going to try to pin him down again. Just so happened that it's Wara. And it's like, I can kind of sit here. You're not directly in my face. Oh, you jumped. Tubi. And that was a good burst. That's fine, we just want the life. And that was actually some brave blocking right there. Because she could have easily got thrown for that for some beefy damage. It wouldn't have killed her, but it would have been some, uh, it would have been a chunk of damage with uh, the Shiki Shadow. To be again. Like, see, this warrior gets a lot of mileage out of, uh, like, these defensive 2Bs while he's bunkered up in a corner, or hold up in a corner. Let me not say bunker. Got him trying to move. Here we go. <laughs> Arcroid. It's sad that she dropped it, but yeah. I'll go back and point this out, just because it looks so clean. This looks so clean. <laughs> Arkroyd can do this. Uh, F Seifuku can do this. I don't. I don't think all Seifukus have this dash. I know F does. There's one other character that can do this. But it's so clean. It's sad that she dropped it though. She wasn't going anywhere after she tech because she was um even if you tech that against Wara, you had the fear of uh him landing with a jump B. 
to be again. To be or not to be? That is the question. She got the meter to break out of this. That was a bold tech. That was a really bold tech. But, like I've said a few times on this stream, where some people have come in and said, oh, I never tech this out of the other. Well, if you never tech in this scenario, you're always blocking that cheeky. And you're never teching because you're assuming that everybody's omnipresent and they see every tech. I, I think this war I actually saw this tech, which is why he backdashed, because I don't know why you would backdash here. <laughs> but hey, it, it gave Ark a chance. That defense, though. And this readjustment. This readjustment right here. Because a lot of people, and I, and I actually fall in this category myself. You're in this scenario, and you clearly see where she's jumping. So you're content to just sit there and block. Because it's, you have no fear. You're like, you're not going to get hit from this, right? But he has the reaction, or he has the presence of mind, rather, to get into a stronger position, which is at the edge of his range, which, for a lot of buttons that Arkroyd wants to press, is outside of her range. That's great defense. <laughs> Made her run in, or rather, she ran in, didn't make her do anything, ran in. She tried to, um, 5A, I believe it was, clashed with a 2B. Yeah. The subtle things. A lot of people get to the point of where they can, they can function. They can do, like, the macro level stuff. But it's, it's the minute details. It's the subtle details that separate people. That separate, like, mid-level to high-level to top to gods and legends and whatever you call them, so on and so forth. Moving on. Moving on to quote unquote the two grapplers of the game. Oh ha ha. Got her moving. The first hit of that is low. I believe. Hey, guess what? We're about to learn something. Because I actually need to know this. I actually don't know this. Uh, that's a crescent coma, right? Yep, that's a crescent coma. It's like I know he has records, and I and I'm pretty sure at some point it's an overhead. It might only be full moon, but I don't know if not that it is a low. Okay. All right. So crescent coma has low records. All right. And it's only the first hit. Yeah, it's only the first hit. Full Moon Coma has a um has an overhead on the last hit. Cause it's like the flip kick thing that you saw a little bit earlier. Just just know that about the comas. That thing. The the regular version of that. That's what it looks like in full moon. I don't think you see a full moon coma in this, so we're not too worried about it. Yeah, that's Sasuke. I blinked. She died. She chased that back dash, though. Chased that one, too. Just one. With the side swap. Sandori, good block. That's spacing, though. Ooh! Das Boot! I know that's the boat. That combo's hard to do. Flub City. There's nothing else that really needs to be said about it. Flub City. And she keeps it as easy as possible. And she can kill him. Like, Alright. Alright, that's the one she flubbed. So after you've like mess up your B and B two or three times, right? And you still have the nerve to go for it because like 
the the jump C parts, the jump full C uh full charge C parts, those parts are hard as well. But I'll say the hardest thing of this entire combo is trying to get the full charge two C, but it's just icing on the cake. So veteran move, she just goes for two C. And this is the cor uh the corner variant you do, two C, five C. That's full charge the six two three B. Which you get your OTG from. And she takes. Now, like I said earlier, she has the meter. I'm pretty sure if she wanted to kill him right here, she could have did it. Because she comes out of max with 200 meter. But she takes a chance. She actually gives the coma a chance. Which, he's sitting on 200 meter. So he could activate heat. He could DP. If he thinks he's, uh, she's going to be in his face, he could grab. He, um... He has 2 2 C. He has 2 2 C, which gives him the armor. Uh, if he wanted to take a harder read, he could shield or backdash. He tries to be a hero and block. And I think you see him crouch for a frame. He guessed wrong. But the thing is, he was left with the opportunity. That's just something I wanted to point out. <laughs> Really doesn't hurt him too much to come into the round with 200 meter as well. He's dead right there. You ever see a train wreck? <laughs> you <laughs> she jumped in and she didn't press a button. I mean, that's that's not the worst thing in the world. Like it's smart sometimes. She jumped in, she didn't press a button, so she gets hit with the 6C. And she actually got counter hit. So what she tried to do is she tried to jump in in 2A. <laughs> she got blown up, man. I don't know if Chudon is a disaster, but that's what I felt about it. And I'm okay with that burst because that was going to be uh, him in the corner. Finding the hit in the scramble. Ooh, Stag City. Mm -mm. <laughs> Stone cold. Stone cold. Like, you don't really see that too often from Satsuki. And it just... To walk in and jump it. Because that could have been 2-2-C, which... I mean, he still could have punished that easily, but... It would have took a little more for dangling, if you will. Yeah, that's the Satsuki that doesn't value her life too much. Yeah, you see she's desperately trying to get out of this. Finds a hit. Uh, making sure she gets the air grab for that. That was an empty jump low, if you didn't catch that somehow. She gets another chance, or she gets another, uh... Yeah, another chance at Oki, if you will. Mm -mm. And it's so weird. Like, I, I guess I know what she was going for. She didn't really have the intention to hit him, of uh, to hit him, because I think if she really wanted to hit him, she'd have did jump C right here. Like, I don't really know why jump a was the answer i guess maybe to beat 623a uh 623c maybe question mark but at the end of the day it's really worked out in her favor because she she could have got kicked for this also, she would have hit uh, jump C. That would have been the easier confirm, or that would have been a confirm into killing him right there. But doesn't matter. She gets to move on to fight this guy. Yeah, three C is air blockable. As much space as it takes. And this Nero, this Nero, you're gonna see this Nero do this a lot. Um, instead of taking the um jump c wall slam into ex uh, ex deer he actually does the ground throw into a lot of setups which is still good because you he's doing stuff into 5c and nero 5c is nuts that right there that move is nuts 
Like, look at that. Like, let's, 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 let's take a second. Look at her guard meter. Like, do you do you see this? Do you, let's, I'm pretty sure somebody blinked. We're going we're going back to see this again. Like, do you, do you, you see the cursor? Just follow the cursor. Chunks, chunks. That was from two C. Chunks. That dash was good. I have to point out this dash. Because that's not an EX deer. That's just uh, a deer. So it's already done its hit. There's birds up here. Japanese quality, I'm sorry. There's there's crows up here, right? So this is really looking like a bad spot. But the thing is, these crows don't come out automatically. You have time to move. So if Nero really doesn't want you to move, he has to do something to take up this space. And she challenged it. She's actually looking for a 2B. Or she's looking for 2A, 2B. I, I guess I spoiled what happens a little bit later. But she's looking for something to take up that space. Come to find out this Nero was expecting her to respect the crows. And was going to take a high-low. Surprise. She's out. She didn't get out cleanly. But getting out is good at the end. Even if she just gets put in the other corner. Into the hard knockdown thing. Which she just converts. Because the... um. The claw thing that he did is actually his reversal that also hard knockdowns. But yeah, you can convert that into 5C as you just saw. Good D. This right here. The average person or the intermediate to low level person in this scenario gets Aaron blocked. Because they they block, they jump out blocking, or some of them get hit, but they jump out blocking, and they get clipped by the jump C, and they don't have the presence of mind to understand that they are now in an air and block scenario. So they've got to do, they've got to address the situation. They've got to shield, they've got to dodge, they've got to double jump, they've got to do something. This isn't like the most advanced thing ever, but just wanted to point it out. Oof. I mean, she was fishing. I, I wouldn't call that reading. She was she was fishing, and this Nero took the bait. So he's eating two of these. No, oh, Dolph City, you know it. I actually thought she went with uh, doubles. It's my bad. Yeah, good old art drive damage. Sasuke has a really good art drive. That was actually her uh, another art, excuse me. AAD. That's something I got to be a little more mindful of. Hey, that's what I was talking about earlier. And actually, before I even get to that, I will point this out. This is um, this is good neutral right here. Just taking up space, like fucking air footsies, if you will. There's somebody in my space. Push him out of the space. Now he doesn't get the best case scenario of um, like air unblocking her, but he pushes her down. He controls her, gets her away, puts a snake on the ground, right? So there's a little bit of pressure. She's she's got to address the snake at some point in time, even if it means like jumping or just conceding to blocking it. She's she's got to address it, right? So Nero just takes the initiative, knowing that he's got a snake backing him up. There's a chicken block. There's a chicken block, but still, it's a block nonetheless. And what's really interesting is she jumped too high for the chicken block, so she has to block the jump C as well. Right? She's out of uh, the block zone at this point, but it's really dicey on the timing, so she doesn't know when she can fire. Gotta hold 5C in the crows. And like last time, she tries to step up, but this time, De Niro took the note. He, he adapted, he adapted. Uh, this time, he just happened to close it. Oh, you forgot about that snake? Sasuke did too. That's something he noticed. That was a that's a punish. 
Cause she's already done this a couple times in the set, where she just she just does full uh three C full charge three C, doesn't cover it, just lets it rip. Alright, 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 alright. He's the air throwing. One. Again, covering the space. EK. Oof. And she's gotten a couple of those, even though she got tripped up by the snake. She got a couple of those ridiculously low air throws. Ikyo, Ikyo, ah, up. That's another little Sasuke note. When you do the um full charge 2C in that combo, you actually have to do it in a way to where you get like the latter hits of the uh, full charge 2C. It's really hard. Again, dashing away from the crows. This time he doesn't he doesn't close it. But he's just trying to move in neutral, just dancing around her. And that was a good air dash to get away as she was closing in. In fact, I kind of want to point it out. Because, let's point out a couple things that happen here. So we're scrambling around, jump C, and this is one of those rare occasions that he's jumping, and he's just, he just really, without trying to embellish this, he doesn't jump deep enough. He's expecting her to either jump away from the snake or just to be standing, but he doesn't hit deep enough, so she doesn't have to block. Doesn't matter, or she doesn't have to stand up and block the jump B. Doesn't matter because she has to block Snake. That's Nero's chance to get some space, get some more control. And she backs away, but because he's whiffing full charge 2C, she's, she's in the air, so she's like, oh, I get some initiative on him. So he tries to meet her in the air, like, Maybe looking for an air dash over him. Nah, she was just going to come in the front door with a jump B. So, they both whiff. But, Satsuki whiffed the jump B. Nero whiffs jump C. That means they both have to land. Since Satsuki gets down there first, it's like, hey, I get the initiative again. What do I think he's going to do? Well, he's not going to dash. I mean, he could, but he's probably not because... Crescent Nero has the teleport dash that it's a reversal, but it's still punishable. So, if he's getting out of this corner, he's going to jump. Hey, guess what? He jumped. And I don't know if the reasoning behind, like, jump back air dash was to, like, move around a 2C or a 2B. That's possibly it. But because she did that, she's conveniently just not at the height. To keep Nero in check. He doesn't know this. This is one of the things that you don't see. You don't really acknowledge. Until after the fact. But it's what happened. Because of the way she moved. Nero can barely clear her. With a, a neutral jump air dash out. And he's out to freedom. And out to being Nero. There you go. That's your dough setup. This this blew my mind. I don't ask me why she backdashed twice in front of the deer. Like, honestly, she was kind of damned if she did, damned if she didn't, because the deer was going to turn around and buck her anyways. But it, it just looks so funny. Or it does to me. Like, she texts into the deer. She backdashes once. She backdashes again. You can't really fault her for the second one, because she's trying not to block. But she gets tagged with jump B. It's just really kind of bizarre to see to me. She actually got comboed into the deer. Ichi Ichi. One one. Backdash away from the stagger. Ooh. It was a little too slow on the um the three C. She's got the meter for this. Mm. And that's the setup we've seen time and time again. The more you, the more you look at him, the more you can see a plan. Learn him. Like after you get um, after you get Mech situated, learn Nero. Like most of the characters aren't really, most of the characters in this game aren't hard to learn. Like. 
there's I'm not going to sit here and say they're so easy you pick them up in five minutes and you can play them like a top level player. There's intricate stuff to them, but just getting started with the fundamentals or the base level for a lot of characters in this game isn't really hard. And for a majority of what you need for a lot of characters in this game, they're not high maintenance characters. Like, in all honesty, like, just based off of what we know, or what I can say to you, this game, I mean, it's clearly le um, just on a casual play the character just, just to get a feel of the game. The fundamental level is a lot lower than Guilty Gear. It's a lot lower than Arcana Heart. Um, it's it's not Arc, it's not a uh, Aquapazer or Dengeki level. Those games, you you have to dig to actually find the deep stuff in there. But you could, like you even said when you started messing around with this game, you could easily play multiple characters in this game. And the only thing that would stop you from playing multiple characters is if like the characters that you wanted to play were the high execution characters like an Arcroid, like uh Seiko Haku, like uh who's another high maintenance character? Uh Crescent Roa. Like as long as you avoid stuff like that, unless you unless you're going to dedicate the time for that, you could easily play multiple characters in this game. Uh, Oh, Xion versus uh, V Xion. Double uh, double rush downs. That's some little bit of footsies right here. A little bit of a. Uh, there's no real like sugar coating. This they're running at each other and they're hitting each other. That was a good punish though. And that was a good, um, not only was that a good punish, on a whiff jump C, because, alright, let me, let me back up a little more, because I have to point out why this even happened in the first place, because the Xion does a, um, she does a max damage ender, or maybe not max damage, she does a damage ender with her DP, right, which means, uh, V Xion gets, Gets a chance to move because she's gonna tech in the air. And she techs away. All right, something that the said person I was talking to in the chat doesn't like to do. Ha ha ha! Techs away in the air. Right. So the Xion on the ground down here is just looking to make her at the least block this jump C so she gets some control. Right. Not that. Well, both of those jump Cs really. And it just so happened that the V Xion did a dive kick that didn't really catch my mind the first time through, but. She gets now past this second jump C. Xion's clearly still in the air, but again, she whiffed jump C, so that means she um she's gotta land, right? Aaron Blocker. But the thing is, the thing that I like about it, the thing that stands out to me, is this uh the V Xion does a really low 5A. But she she knows well enough. She has enough confidence to know that she hit her on uh, in the air, and to go into an air confirm. Like, I don't know how many times you'll see this scenario. And when somebody like a lot of people will hit this, but they'll think they hit somebody on the ground, so they'll drop this. That's just confidence. That's a good burst. Hey, remember what I was talking about earlier with Nero? When you get put into those air on block scenarios, and the average person would have been like, hum, I'm blocking. Well, I'm blocking. I'm fine, right? And they would have ate that 5A, and they would have been highly upset at life. But this Vision, nah, she dodged that. She's not a normal person. Let's not talk about the fact that she gets la hit later. She got around the air and block, and that's what's important for the lesson. <laughs> Literally dodging gunfire. Oof, air footsies. It's con controlling the space. Uh, 
Like, I'm kind of debating if I wanted to go back and look at it or not, because there wasn't a whole lot to say about that. I mean, there is, now that I think about it, and I'll point it out if it happens again. But it's more of a movement thing. And you kind of see it right there. Where, when you see, like, again, when you see, like, mid low level people well i can't even say it's middle it's more of a style more of a, a mindset that people have when they go into games like this they whenever they move or more specifically when they go to the air you'll come across people who have the need to air dash everywhere and because this is an air dash fighter a fast frantic air dash fighter they don't really appreciate the um the value of just forward jumps and just like having more control of jump especially in this game where when you neutral jump you can drift uh you can drift but they don't really value being able to ma uh maintain control like neutral control and press a button at will even when you go into the air they feel like they always need to be using their speed to the advantage so they need to air dash here and there and they don't really understand that air dashing itself is a fairly huge commitment. It's not a huge commitment until you get up to somebody who really understands the game and they start thinking about like the initial dashes that a character has or the fact that you're limited in some options when you air dash. But once you start really seeing that and you really start on, um, you start considering that and you understand that when you're jacked up in somebody's face, you don't have to just IAD at them all the time. That's when you start opening up a lot of game, uh, a lot of your game to the fact that um you're not just constantly running into uh, any or five A's. You're not constantly like overshooting somebody because they duck on your IAD if you can't um if your character can't go low enough. And you just find yourself um putting more uh, putting people in more bad scenarios. Whether you just hit them or you at least check them and make them block something. <laughs> I mean, sure, V. Xion didn't get the best out of that, but again, she didn't IAD into a jump A, or a 5A, excuse me. I think the thing that made me the saddest about this entire set is I think that's the only get your roll on combo she did. Oh, she did two, that's right. And she did the full one there. I like that combo, I don't know why. If you can do that combo, you can play V. Xion. Okay, I'm ready to go on to the next one. Hey, like I was talking about earlier, or rather just a second ago, where yeah, you don't have to air dash everywhere. You just, you really don't. I mean, it, it makes you feel all cool, especially in this game with two button air dashes. Like, you feel powerful and stuff. You don't have to do 9 9 or 7 7 like uh, Arxis game. You can just. You get that movement. You get to be a Marvel player. But you don't have to do that. Because if this Waro would have tried to air dash somewhere, he would have missed the timing for this and he would have been the one getting counter. Or he would have just got hit. He wouldn't have got counter hit because he would have been in his air dash animation. But. Counter hit jump A right out the gate. And actually, if he really wanted to convert that, I'm pretty sure he still could have turned that into a 4 2 1 C. The, the, the spinny thing that's the hard knockdown. But it's just a starter, no big deal. And you see that Xion jumped away from 2B. She's. She's mindful of that. Oof, good throw. <laughs> you know, I don't even need to go back. And I made a YouTube about this, like a short VOD. Because I, I wondered, like, why I've never seen anybody tech that throw. I don't think I've ever seen a war get thrown out of that. Like, it's one thing that I've rarely seen somebody tech that throw. But to get thrown out of that setup, <laughs> you want to talk about blatant disregard. And then she dashed up and she threw him. 
Uf. The Botsies. With punishment. Trying to backdash again. He's trying to get a, a lot of use out of his backdash, which, I mean, he's had some success. Kakui combo. Alright, think about this ender. As you can see right here, this is Nero esque, if you will. I mean, not as threatening as Nero because you don't have EX Deer, but it's the same concept in, um, instead of putting somebody on the ground and controlling them that way you leave them in the air and you take the the ground space under them so it's hazardous for them to come down onto the ground some more footsies and some good movement I said good movement and then he ran smack dab into a wall of jump C but with the little space he had, he was making good moves. Hey, guess who we, what he got again? Baited like a fish! Yep. 4 2 1 ender. OTG? OTG into no Shiki, but gets to take another turn. Doesn't really take it, though. And that's the, um, the jump B to cover the tech I was talking about earlier. Stag City. Now, I don't, I don't entirely know why right here, he's sitting in max, and he's sitting in the high part of max. I don't entirely know why he didn't, um, he didn't 4 2 one c here. Like, I kind of wonder why he didn't. I mean, she can't neutral tech and activate heat but what happens if she texts in and activates heat what happens if she texts in and then you're kind of in this wonky scenario to where you as wara have to guess but if you 421 you take some of the guesswork out of it you take uh her teching out of it and if she wants to do something stupid from uh from where she is right now that's that's her own prerogative but I kind of wonder why he just dunked her. Clearly didn't matter. It's just weird to me. And if you can't tell, this Wara just likes opening with uh, jump A. Because he did it three times in a row. You can't blame him if it worked for the first two. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Left, right. That's the kind of stuff you have to do to play Xion. To play Xion efficiently. And those aren't easy. They're not the hardest things ever, but they're not easy. Nope. Nope. I've seen you dash after that gunshot. Oof. Trade that's always in the ground in player's favor. Or normally is. Again, the, the rare scenario where it's like even or in the air person's favor is if whatever the air move is knocks down. Oh, this is an oddity right here. I mean, Arc vs. Hime is funny enough, but no, this is a C Hime. Stag. And again, oh, this is this is something else that's pretty good. A little thing to point out. And I mean, this is easy to or easier to do against Hime because I, I'm, I, I don't know how to describe. I don't know how to make a joke about this. She floats, right? She's just really floaty. So when Art drops this confirm, which it's tricky confirm, it makes sense that she dropped it. When she sees the Hime jump, she immediately chases her up in the air. She tries to like I call it squaring up against somebody. You know, just staying in front of somebody. And trying to uh, trying to block their way out of the corner, and she commits as far as double jumping at her, which she guesses correctly, and she gets to bring the Hime back down. And not only does she bring her back down, she gets to land on top of her, which is pretty cool. And then she starts doing Arcroid things. Uh. That's hard. I, I tried that today after I watched this because 
Arkroyd's one of the few characters that I just can't hit buttons with, or I don't know how to hit buttons with. That's hard. That right there. That's hard. One, two, three. It's pointing this out again. I know I'm stopping five million times. I'm sorry. This is mine. I do what I want. Instead of instead of just instant air dashing in, because this is Hime, right? This is Hime. So you pushing yourself this far out and stopping against Hime is scary enough. Cause I think the only Hime button that doesn't hit you is her A button. Like, even though this is a uh, crescent Hime, her B's hit you, her C's hit you. I, I wouldn't be surprised if she can somehow make her D hit you. Like, she can hit you from here, right? So, you don't want to just slam in and try to air dash at her, right? And in fact, this arc has the, uh, the presence of mind to, hey, maybe she's going to try to 5C me. Maybe I can shut down a 5C. But she does it with a neutral jump, not an instant air dash. That's another thing I have to point out. One more little subtle thing. This is the learning thing. To back up a little bit more. I say jump A specifically. Because there's actually another purpose of this jump A. And it's to look for a jump out. But it's really key that she uses jump A. Because remember what I said earlier about what happens when you use a jump B or a jump C? How you can't do anything else till you hit the ground, unless you're coma, and maybe another character I don't know. Well, when you use a jump A for most characters, that allows you to do something else. As in, you could jump. Some characters can actually air dash if you do like a rising jump A. But you could also come down with a jump B. Nugget. Hey. This is where she gets to do the Hime thing and get to be a boss character. Because in case you forgot, Hime actually is a boss character. She's balanced, but she's a boss character. That combo's fun. That's some grime. That's also cool, too. I'm actually going to see something in a second Because I don't know the answer to this And I was going to point this out And this might cross somebody's mind when they see this I'll stop it the next time it happens Because I know what happens again Welcome to Hime by the way Where she just kind of laughs at you from three character lengths away but it's party time Don't worry about the invalid. We got this. He may again crest. This this blows my mind. Everybody watching this is probably saying the same thing. What, the, what are you doing? What are you doing? Why why not? Why not? Like she she activated. She stopped the clock. She got her life back. Why don't you do the same thing? Why not? Why not? Like, why not? Why not? Why would you not do that? <laughs> yeah, you, you understand what I'm curious about. Oh. Uh, Hello? Oh, it's back. Alright. Hopefully I can make this work. Oh, I know what I need to do. I actually need to do this. Oh, that could have worked. I think that'll work. Uh, whoops. Uh, block it the other way. Alright. That actually, that's what I thought. That actually breaks, uh, quote unquote, breaks the cross up protection. 
it doesn't technically break it, but the thing is, she's still facing to the right. So, when she comes back over, when she does her win mine, I think it's actually called a win mine. When she comes back over, you still have to block that the proper way. <laughs> Couldn't he may pillar her for it? EX pillar? I mean, she's honestly looking for it, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> She never really honestly even fakes it or tries, because, I mean, <laughs> it's not like you just immediately do it, but the plan was just to jump in, right? <laughs> the plan was just to jump in full screen at Hime, right? Nah. <laughs> I don't know, I just thought it was really weird. Because, I mean, this is where the scenario starts, okay? Why not activate here? <laughs> and I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna falter for getting hit by this heat, because if she didn't heat when she woke up, I mean, anything's fair game. I get, you could argue that she's looking for it. You could also argue that, hey, she's not moving because I'm winning and there's five seconds left on this clock. But she stands up, right? She reacts to her standing up. But her reaction to her standing up is to just stay there. Why not? You have time to mess with her because the clock stopped. I mean, you're, you're perfectly right. She could have blew her up for that. And it might not have been... Uh, it might not have been pillar, because I'm thinking when you say pillar, you're thinking of not that. You're thinking of no that no. Where is this? You have to do that in here, okay? Like possibly that. I was thinking maybe that, but. I don't know, that, that just screamed in my mind to try it. Because what have you got to lose at this point? <laughs> you lose the round because you can't get back in there because it's he made. <laughs> like, are you going to roll the dice and jump that she didn't and hope she didn't press a button? Like, eh. damned if you do, damned if you don't. We can theory craft all day, or we can get like some cool game with some cool feature where we get in the scenario and try it ourselves. But I don't know. And then if nothing else, here's here's the other one, okay? Here's the other one. Okay, you say she doesn't try it there. Why not here? <laughs> it's no biggie. I just realized she has Velma colors. I I don't know what happened. I kind of think she didn't know what side she landed on, but that's really unfortunate. That's a good use of dodge to turn around. Kaze. That's wind. Party time. Party's over. Oh, by the way, like, if you haven't messed with Hime, or not Hime, if you haven't messed with Arcroid, another reason why I just want to point this out, just a little Arcroid knowledge. Just to give some credit to this guy. 
Oh, did I skip forward somehow? What the fuck? I'm pretty sure I clicked back here. Yeah, I skipped forward somehow. Those slashes are TK'd. And what makes it even crazier is the, uh, that one you do, the one of uh, the grounded one you do, the full charge one, you have to delay it so they get hit by the later frames of it. Uh, it's that's some craziness. That's okay, Hime has a DP, she doesn't care. Are those those claw dives like that right there by the way that's just 2b i'm saying this kind of assuming like people are like me and don't really know a lot about arcroid because i don't ever really see this character and then when i see this character she just demolishes everything hi low She's dying. That's all that needs to be said. And eventually she just hits the A button. Breaks the meter. And activates to get the life back. That was high low. <coughs> There's no left right in that. Mm -mm. It's that boss character status right there just take up an entire column. Not there. I just had to remind myself. I looked away for a second. I'm sorry. She dashed in and she she got beaten to the punch by a character with um. Oof, I forget how slow Hime's buttons are. They're fairly slow. P.S. We switched to uh, we switched to the real raid boss, F. Hime. Shion doesn't really care too much about that right now. Cause everybody goes on and on about how amazing Hime's neutral is and how she she has the fastest walk speed in the game. Well, she has the fastest walk speed in the game, and how she has these really long buttons. None of that really matters if somebody's standing in your face kicking the crap out of you. I mean, it's helpful here, <laughs> as you can tell. But so help her if this Xion gets back in on her own free will. Which means the plan is to never let her get in on her own free will. 5B. He made things. Deeper in check. Mm. And I don't really, I don't really know. I said in my mind I didn't really want to go back to this. But I didn't go back far enough. I don't really know why she went back in. <laughs> like, I'm... I guess that she had to be trying to uh, a jump A or a jump B there, but I don't know. It's kind of an odd spacing. I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty. She got blown up for it. It's just really odd to see her go back in right there. Oof. That was a good burst. And I'll tell you why that was a good burst, or I, why I think that was a good burst. Well, there's just two reasons why I think this is a good burst. One, she has, she's in max, so she can burst. And when she gets hit, the there's no way for her to get out of this combo with uh, with max unless uh, unless he may drops it. And since she's in crescent moon, sure, she would still be able to activate. But then she's hoping to, uh, she's hoping to blow Hime back with, uh, the heat activation. The other reason why I think this is a good burst is if you look at Hime's meter, she's about to, uh, she's about to get in the max. And so this combo without a shadow of a doubt would kill her. 
I don't know if she would go that far, but needless to say, this counter is the death of Shion unless she uh, unless she bursts. But hey, she picks up a tech punish out of it. Hey, she picks up another tech punish out of it from some nonsense. And this he may burst because she she wants to like not lose. Whoa, sexy. And to hey, guess who didn't punish the tech? Jump a. Ikkyo, Ikkyo. Making sure we get the uh, the air throw from that to set up. <laughs> Stray hits. Not really confirming, just swinging for the fences. Oh, I didn't go back too far. She texts. The tech itself wasn't really a bad idea. This, the, uh, double jump, because she double jumps first, right? Yeah, this double jump looks really scary. So she's trying her damnedest to control her space. Because she she double jumped and there's a Satsuki down there. And that Satsuki has two hundred meter. So this Satsuki really wanted to. She probably could have grabbed her. Maybe not at this very moment, but earlier she probably could have grabbed her. It's okay, because this Satsuki had a chance before she got tagged. Miss Tech punish. Shield 2C. And even though she didn't activate, she she comes out of heat with 200 meter because she didn't activate and she's a crescent character. So if she ever feels threatened and needs to activate to get the meter, she can. Does or, uh, to get the life back? Excuse me. She could have. Didn't need it though. She kept a close game. Oof. The anti air. And that's again, that's just some slot. Drop confirms left and right. That was a good bait. And then the panic button. There's a lot she can do with this. And she puts her in a guaranteed setup. Like I did, I just wanted to pause and see what she did, or wanted to wait and see what she did because I couldn't remember. Cause the other option she had, if she wanted to be greedy, is from right here. She's out of the corner, so she could have um, she could have took a Sandori right here. She could have took a three ray right here, and took any easy confirm in the arc drive. But instead, she wants to tag on a little more damage and still gets a guaranteed setup. Good D. Mm. And again, some slop. The counter hit confirmed from a shield. The danger zone. Mm. That jump C. <laughs> that jump C. <laughs> Broke her leg in half. <laughs> what a sad way to go. I don't I don't know what else to say about this. Like, she's trying to trip guard her. Because I don't think Shion's 2A reaches high enough to actually anti-air. But to get it broken off like this. <laughs> so sad. And that's how this ended. So the winner is the Satsuki and whoever the Satsuki team with. I don't remember. Yay! I don't know if 